Why is 10 degrees diagnosed as a scoliosis? When a patient receives a diagnosis of scoliosis, very often I'll sit there and I'll talk to them about the different categories of scoliosis and, and explain to them that you know 10 degrees is very often the initial diagnosis of scoliosis. And the question always comes up or can come up is like, why 10 degrees? Because we know scoliosis is an unnatural spinal curvature with rotation. And the spine has a, a rotation into the concavity. Um, and this Cobb angle measurement, when they measure scoliosis on an x-ray, needs to be 10 degrees or greater to be considered scoliosis. The rotation and the bending causes a three-dimensional deformation. A Cobb angle is the orthopedic standard of measurement or diagnosis of scoliosis. And like I said, this is actually actually measured on an x-ray. They normally take an x-ray either from the front or from the back, and typically it's a full spine x-ray is the best way to take it, and normally it's taken standing. And these uh, lines are drawn on the most tilted vertebra above to the most tilted vertebra below the apex of the curve, which is the most horizontal. And wherever these most tilted vertebrae are, they'll draw a line here and a line here. They'll draw, they'll draw perpendicular lines going down, and where these lines intersect, they will form an angle. That angle is measured in degrees. The higher the angle, the more severe the scoliosis is or the more misaligned it is, and the lower the angle, the less severe it is. Cobb angle measurements are determined the severity. Now, when they use severity of scoliosis, the severity of scoliosis was uh, initially developed by orthopedic surgeons. So therefore, we have three main categories, mild, moderate, and severe. I like to use a fourth, a, uh, a fourth category called very severe. This categorization devised by orthopedic surgeons was to determine whether this scoliosis is, is severe enough to consider surgery, meaning surgery being a very invasive treatment where they use rods and screws to fuse the spine together to stop progression of the scoliosis. So therefore, if you're considering this treatment option, which is a very invasive treatment option, a curve has to hit a certain size before that type of treatment is being warranted. So therefore, when they say a person has a mild scoliosis, and that's between 10 and 25, they're saying it's mild relative to surgical intervention. A mild scoliosis can still cause problems. Just because it's called mild doesn't mean it's not mild to that person. Because I've seen many patients with 15, 20 degree curves that can have severe pain as a result of the scoliosis or severe dysfunction or cosmetic issues. And you can tell they have some scoliosis going on, but it's not severe enough to, be, to warrant surgery. So I don't like that word mild scoliosis for that reason, because even though it's mild relative to surgical standards, for that person, it may be a problem and it may need, may need to be addressed. But however, once you break 25 degrees, we call this moderate scoliosis. And moderate scoliosis is between 25 and 40 degrees Cobb angle measurement. And once you break 40 degrees, we call this severe. And then for me, I like to use a fourth category when it's 80 degrees or greater, we call that very severe. So what degree of scoliosis is actually normal? None. There is no degree of scoliosis that's considered normal. So if you have nine degrees and it's not 10 degrees, it's still considered scoliosis, but you don't have the official diagnosis of scoliosis. Any abnormal curvature of the spine will cause an un unnatural loading to the bones of the spine, the discs, and all the issues and everything above and below it. So therefore, any type of misalignment will lead to a biomechanical disruption. It's kind of like asking how much of how much car misalignment do you need to start to affect the tires and shocks and the way your car functions? The truth is none. There is no misalignment to your car that your mechanics are going to recommend you drive your car with. Well, therefore, there's no curvature of your spine that's ever recommended or ever recommended to be seen. Now, we know there's a little variance on an image or an x-ray, so I always say, Two degrees, anything less than two degrees is considered normal because no x-ray is perfectly taken. But you know, five, six, seven, eight degrees, it's still considered a curve, even though you can't diagnose it as scoliosis. So mild scoliosis is just like mild misalignments to pa patient to people's cars, introduce uneven forces, which can lead to problems, especially if left uncorrected over a long period of time. And normally small curves always become bigger curves, right? We never have big curves that wasn't, that wasn't once a smaller curve. So no, even though we don't know how much a curve will progress over time, we don't know how severe curves will progress over time, but one thing we do know that every 50, 60, 70, 80 degree curve at one point was probably a few degrees and progressed to that point.
So why was 10 degrees used as its cutoff point? Why was 10 degrees considered scoliosis and nine degrees not? Well, this actually goes back <laughs> quite some time ago, back into the nine, back to 1977, back into the 70s, and it was a doc, uh, Dr. William Kane wrote an article on scoliosis prevalence, and really it was titled "A Call for a Statement of Terms," trying to say, okay, here's a cutoff point. We're just going to agree that this becomes a, cu a cutoff point. And the idea was there was too much variability in determining cutoff points for patients with scoliosis. Some doctors were saying 15 degrees for scoliosis. Some people were saying 20 degrees for scoliosis. Some people were saying 10 degrees or five degrees. So therefore, the only reason why they chose 10 degrees was just to create some standardization for management, diagnosis, assessment, and the treatment of scoliosis itself. 10 degrees has no real other relevance other than it's 10 degrees. There's um, there's no real magic number why 10 degrees are, because it's not because once you have 10 degrees, it's going to get worse really fast or it's going to get worse slower. There's no other relevance to 10 degrees other than it was just a way to start calling it scoliosis. Now, to understand that there's nearly 7 million people living with scoliosis in the United States alone it is a very highly prevalent condition. There are many patients that are actually diagnosed with scoliosis. And in streamlining the diagnosis of scoliosis, Dr. Kane suggested that 10 degrees be the cutoff point. Now, what's really scary is how many patients that don't even know that they have scoliosis. Because we know for scoliosis to become visible, they actually have to be about 20 to 25 degrees before you start to see things cosmetic. Medically. And a lot of times, scoliosis doesn't cause pain in children. It only causes pain in, in, in adults, and especially as they're aging. So even though we say there's 7 million people probably living with scoliosis, we believe that number is way underestimated. Um, when we look at patients with scoliosis, we, you know, we always kind of think of children, and we think about 4 to 5% of all kids have some type of scoliosis. However, as patients, as we start X-rating older and older population, we know patients like in the 80s and 90s, that if we x-ray like, you know, 180-year-olds or 90-year-olds, we're going to see somewhere between 30 to 50% of those patients actually have scoliosis because many patients are not diagnosed and they don't even know they have it. And they may not be, they may be experiencing problems, and but the curve isn't severe enough to where treatment is warranted, like something like surgery. So therefore, a lot of times they're not even told they have it until they're actually asked more questions and see their own films. So we, sh we need to really stop chasing just numbers or degrees and say, okay, how is this spine affecting this person and what's the best treatment option? And stop going away from just 10, 25, 35, 45, 55, and really looking at function versus you know, feeling. I always say cause over condition is really what the primary goal of every treatment option should be for scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.